You know, you're going to grab that, but I'm grabbing it first. Now, when I walked into this room, I thought this was some exotic piece of quartz or some rock sitting there. So, And now I understand this is five pounds of fat. Uh, but as a lipidologist, it's five pounds of triglycerides that I'm looking at there. And I don't want to leave here today without Gary going through the mechanism of why people who might have this in parts of their body, why doesn't that come out as energy when the people need it? Something seems to be trapping the triglycerides in the fat cells. And this is where I think we're going to link everything together here because this is where your insulin resistance and a, uh, a hormone insulin affects an enzyme that sort of traps fat in your adipocytes. So I'm looking at triglycerides there. So maybe this with is what, that lead you can... Yeah. This is historically, again, we've had this idea that getting fat's all about just too many calories. So um, you eat too much, you've got this excess in your bloodstream, and somehow that excess ends up in your fat tissue, and your fat tissue has nothing to say with it. So if you talk to obesity researchers, if you talk to nutritionists, obesity is this disorder of energy balance. Too many calories coming in too little going out and the difference gets dumped in your fat tissue and the truth is in our body you know we don't just have these huge amounts of fat it's stored in fat cells and the fat cells like every other cell in your body very carefully regulate how much energy they will let in and this is controlled by enzymes and hormones and the primary enzyme involved with getting the um, uh, uh, fat into the fat cell to store is an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase or LPL for short and this is on the outside of all cells or most cells but on fat cells it's stimulated by a hormone called insulin so when you secrete insulin in response to your, a meal a carbohydrate rich meal your body the insulin stimulates this lipoprotein lipase to take fatty acids from the bloodstream and simplistically pull them into the fat cell and there's another hormone in the fat cell called hormone-sensitive lipase that works to break down these triglycerides Dr. Dayspring talked about and break them down into fatty acids. And as fatty acids, they could flow in and out of the fat cell. So when the fatty acid gets bound up into a triglyceride, it gets stored because the triglyceride's too big to get in and out of the membrane. And when it's broken down into a fatty acids again, it can now escape. And what insulin does is stimulate the enzyme that pulls the fatty acids into the fat cells so that they could be bound up in triglycerides and it suppresses the enzyme called hormone sensitive lipase that allows that breaks down the triglycerides into the fatty acids so if you look at a textbook and you know a fat metabolism or any physiology or endocrinology textbook endocrinology being the science of hormones and hormone related diseases it will tell you that insulin is a hormone that controls the accumulation of fat in the fat tissue sort of independent of the nutritional state of the animal or the human as the case may be so if your insulin levels are elevated you're going to store fat not everybody. Some people are going to be burning, you know, it, it, this is a, a um, you know, differs from person to person. But those of us who are predisposed to get fat, who fatten easily, it's because when we elevate insulin, our insulin's telling us to burn the fat rather than, you know, to store the fat rather than burn it. So it's not about how much we eat and how much we exercise. It's literally about how the foods we eat impact the secretion of insulin from the pancreas and how sensitive our fat tissue is to that insulin and our muscle tissue is to that insulin and how the insulin interacts with these hormones lipoprotein lipase and hormone sensitive lipase but the message is the simple message is that the carbohydrate foods we eat drive this insulin secretion and that drives this accumulation of fat in our fat cells and if you want to get fat out of your fat cells what you have to do is lower insulin this was known in 1965. Rosalind Yalow and Solomon Burson, who invented the technology for measuring hormones in the bloodstream, you know, in the early 1960s were saying the thing you have to do to get fat out of your fat tissue, to mobilize it and then burn it in your muscles, in your lean tissue for fuel, is lower insulin levels. And the way you lower insulin levels is not by eating a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet. 
it's by doing the opposite, by eating as few carbohydrates as you can and getting the sugars out of your diet. When you do that, insulin levels come down, all the dyslipidemia, all the lipid problems and atherogenic problems that Dr. Dayspring is going to talk about go away. And you let fat out of your fat tissue and you tell the rest of your cells to burn it. One little addendum, minor correction of what he said. In fact, lipoprotein lipase is only expressed in vascular beds in muscle, cardiac or skeletal, or in adipocytes because that's where the fatty acids go. But interestingly, in certain occasions, there are two other areas where lipoprotein lipase can be expressed in the pregnant woman in the placenta. Uh, you know, when a woman gets pregnant, her triglyceride level prior to pregnancy typically elevates about five times normal because she's overproducing big VLDL particles which enter the placental artery. The placenta expresses lipoprotein lipase, hydrolyzes triglycerides to fatty acids. That's what the little embryo and fetus eats for nine months, the fatty acids from mom's triglycerides. Then after mom delivers the, the, the wonderful little baby, uh, many women nowadays are breastfeeding, and there's this white substance that comes out of that woman's breast. Last time I saw somebody with a very high triglyceride, their serum is awful white. Well, the breast expresses lipoprotein lipase and extracts fatty acids from the same triglyceride-rich lipoproteins. So that's where you can actually occurs. There. You can see this shift occur in women. So. As they get pregnant, they express more lipoprotein lipase. Also, on their um, there's female sex hormones control this, so they express it below the waist on their fat tissue, so they could store calories yeah. as fat. And they do it below the waist, because if they did it above the waist, as they got pregnant, they would fall over. So you want to balance the weight of the child. I mean, evolution is brilliant. I just you know, personified it, but I'm going to get away. I'm going to let myself do it this time. So the lipoprotein lipase sprouts on their fat tissue below their waist, so they store all these calories. And then when they have the child, now, if there's a famine, they've got the fuel on board to feed that child anyway. After the child's born, the lipoprotein lipase on their fat tissue below their waist starts going down, and that's when it upregulates on their mammary glands, on their breast tissue, so that they, and basically their body's saying, okay, now we're gonna let the fat out of here where we've stored it, and we're gonna bring it up here so you could produce milk and feed the child. And one of the arguments I've been making in my books is like, if you just pay attention to how fat tissue's regulated, you can answer all these questions. Why women put on weight and they get pregnant? How they, you know, how the baby gets fed? How the before birth and after birth? Why we get fat? Why we get obese? Why some diets work better than others? And it's all about just how the fat tissue is regulated and what you have to do to sort of suppress the lipoprotein lipase. And you do it by lowering insulin levels. And one last thing on the woman, when she does enter that menopause and the ovary stops making estrogen, estrogen is an insulin sensitizer, and it's one of the contributory forces to insulin resistance that occurs in a woman after menopause. Part of it is age, part of it is nutritional, but part of it is the loss of estrogen. There is some redistribution of the fat beds in women after menopause. It, they start to look a little bit more like men with visceral fat and not the gluteal fat. Well, and lipopro uh, estrogen works, we we're talking about this enzyme lipoprotein lipase. Insulin stimulates it, estrogen suppresses it. So women go through menopause, they secrete less estrogen, they start to upregulate these LPL receptors, these, uh, this LPL enzyme on their fat tissue, right. particularly, again, in the places, you know, above the waist, where before the estrogen was keeping things under control, now the absence of estrogen stimulates LPL and you get, you know, the accumulation of fat. So it's got nothing to do, it's not like they become gluttons, it's not that they become <laughs> sedentary. Their bodies start storing calories as fat that they didn't tell it because their hormonal milieu has changed.